Hi, welcome to this answers video. With the development of high performance computing and advanced algorithms, we are developing sophisticated programs that perform complex and intelligent tasks. Such advanced algorithms are generally termed as artificial intelligence or AI. There are many systems around you you may not realize have intelligent algorithms in performing a task. For example, voice assistant or image recognition in your smartphone. In this lesson, we would introduce ourselves to the concepts of AI and ML and look at a few concepts to understand the classification of ML algorithm. We will also look at generally where PyMEPDL fits in AI ML and some ancillary benefits to the data scientist in using PyMEPDL. Ready? Let's get started. AI is a broader term that encompasses the ideas like machine learning, neural networks, and other algorithm techniques to create sophisticated computer systems. You might often hear these terms together as AI and ML. Generally speaking, machine learning is a method of allowing a computer to make predictions from finding patterns in the data. The concept of machine learning can be considered as a subset of AI, whereas a neural network can be understood a more advanced machine learning algorithm. Let's understand these concepts by further using an example of predictive system that could read and record postal code on mail letters. To create this, first we need to define how algorithm can recognize each alphanumeric character and what are the set of rules to characterize them. For this, we can divide the complex image into a grid and then record the color gradient values in each cell. This simplifies the overall approach. And now we need a program that will process each image from the bulk data set and find patterns in the recorded cell gradient values. This is called training the algorithm. Once we adjust the training algorithm to reach the set accuracy of characterization, we then test it on a test data. Once the characterization matches the test accuracy in the test data, we can embed program in a system for application. There are numerous machine learning algorithms tailored to different application cases. Based on their learning methods, we classify them into two categories, supervised and unsupervised. Supervised learning involves training a model on a labeled dataset, where the input data is paired with the correct output. The goal of supervised learning is to make accurate predictions on unseen data. On the other hand, unsupervised learning involves training a model on an unlabeled dataset where the model discovers the pattern and relationship within the data without pre-existing knowledge of the output. Models are also categorized on the base of type of output they produce. Two main classifications are regression model and classification model. Regression is a type of supervised learning where the goal is to predict a continuous output value such as the price of household based on its size and location. Classification on the other hand is also a type of supervised learning model focuses on predicting discrete outputs such as determining whether an email is a spam or not. The machine learning model for the mail address reading example that we discussed earlier can be classified as a supervised model. With classification where we define the expected output to be one among the nine numeric digits. Since we expect the algorithm to learn from the data, the larger and more varied data we feed it in the more accurately relationships can be defined between the data labels. Usually, the data sets can be gathered from real-world examples. For instance, in our mail letter example, we could collect large number of different handwritten pin codes, thus providing a large, diverse set of inputs for a model to learn from. But when it's difficult to obtain a sufficiently large real-world data set, we can create a synthetic data set. For example, say we are creating a neural network to recognize handwritten letters. In this case, say a letter A. If the neural network was trained on this letter, it can easily recognize this, but would struggle with a version where we rotate it. We could extend the test set by creating synthetic data of this letter by manually rotating letters to different orientations like this. So far, we have understood the basic idea of machine learning and synthetic data sets. Let's see how this interesting concept of machine learning extend to PyMEPDL. Consider automobile testing. No one wants to be a driver in a crash test. While the use of human cadavers or live animals could provide accurate data in such tests, they do provide a clear ethical dilemmas to a test engineer. 
Therefore, crash test dummies has been developed for testing purposes. In the world of finite element analysis, detailed crash test dummy models exist so that the simulation engineers can include them in crash simulations. The datasets from these crash simulations could accurately be termed as synthetic datasets in the parlance of AI ML. Mechanical APDL and other finite element tools provide to be an excellent choice for generating such physics based numerical simulation datasets. Python is among the most popular and effective language in development of AI ML algorithms and bringing these two technologies together would create a seamless workflow in AI ML application development. And this is what PyMAPDL can bring forth. PyMAPDL is Python language library offered under the PyANSYS umbrella to access the mechanical APDL solver. It enables integrating the state of the art engineering simulation software with Python rich scientific and data processing libraries in developing apps and engineering workflows. To get started with PyMEPDL, you can refer to this ANSYS innovation course. Another benefit of using PyMEPDL is the flexibility it offers with respect to collaboration. Being a Python based, we can write it in a variety of manner and many of the PyMEPDL examples are done in Jupyter Notebooks, which happens to be a widely used tool for MLAI. Alternatively, we could go in the other direction as shown in the modeling and simulation applications using PyANSYS course, where a web app developer and a FEA user create a web-based tool to create a parametric version of the model. Then the MLAI developer could request data via the web interface as needed. Lastly, PyMAPDL has a built-in structure to simultaneously launch multiple ins instances of a MAPDL as a service. This facilitates the user to simultaneously solve a set of unique inputs for the same or multiple simulation model. These multiple in instances are called a pool. Depending on the size of the finite element model and the hardware available, a pool of two or more instances can be created such that the differing models can be run concurrently. This will cut down on the time it takes to create a synthetic dataset for MLAI application. To understand it better, we will cover the application of pools in lesson 4 of this course. Summing up, let's recap the key takeaways from this video. We have introduced ourselves to the concepts of AI and ML. We also looked at a few basic concepts that lay the foundation in understanding the ML algorithms. Then we looked at the importance of large dataset in an ML algorithm accuracy and also how generating synthetic dataset can help us with this. Finally, we looked at how PyMAPDL can be a powerful tool to generate synthetic datasets for AI ML applications. So far, we have looked at many advantages that PyMAPDL brings to the table as a tool for AI ML applications. In the following video, we will look at this more closely. With this, we come to the end of this video. Hope you find it informative. See you in the next lesson.